freedom of speech. And the lockdown, of course. I'm here to support small business and the people who've lost their jobs and who are told they're not essential. I believe everyone is essential. And I have a hard time believing that we have a pandemic. First of all, they've left the beer stores open. They've left the liquor stores open. They've left the convenience stores open so you can buy your lottery tickets and your uh, cigarettes. And if it, there's a huge pandemic and people are dying like flies, how come there's planes lifting off anywhere over the world? I'm here today because I'm upset with the trends in society. We're not, we're being pushed into corners more and more and more all the time. We're being told what we can do rather than being able to use our own intuition. We're losing our charter rights. They're basically gone right now with the way that our government is uh, dealing with people. Uh, for instance, somebody that comes in, if you heard of the uh, lockdowns at the airports, they're forcing people to stay in uh, hotels at the airports at their own expense. Um, at least 14 day lockdowns. When somebody gets back home and have to stay in their own house, supposedly have to stay in their own house. It's ridiculous. This virus has never been proven to exist. The test they use to diagnose this isn't, it doesn't provide a diagnosis. It provides an example of little bits of genetic material, increasingly smaller and increasingly more amplified. That's the PCR test. The guy that developed the test said this can't be used for diagnosis. That's ridiculous. The people that don't support, that don't think, what are the kids going to look forward to? I think it, more and more people are waking up to what's going on. Yeah, I think they have some big plans for us. You know, uh, the cashless society and the great reset where we'll own nothing and be happy. Well, people don't believe that that's going to happen, but I do if we don't stand up and do something about it. I know everybody's frustrated after uh, a year now of being in dealing with COVID. I think we're all sick of it. I am certainly, believe me. And, <laughs> and uh, I certainly understand the frustration of people that are just hanging on, trying to run a business and survive, that it's uh, be a really challenging year. I mean, I was in the lodge business for 30 years, and I would not have wanted to have been in the business the past year. I mean, it's just really all kinds of things outside of your control that makes it really, really challenging to, to just hang on. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, I think there's light at the end of the tunnel. We were just talking about the vaccination clinics, and that's that was really good news on Friday that came out uh, that the, basically the numbers of vaccinations, vaccines available is going up dramatically from just about every company and, and the new uh, Johnson Johnson one dose vaccine was just approved as well. So that's uh, that's great news. And the other news was that there, you know, the strategy seems to be to vaccinate everyone that wants to be by the end of June. So I, you know, I think that's really positive. Gives some, some light at the end of the tunnel that hopefully we're gonna have a more or less normal more normal summer with more, you know, more activities being able to happen and, you know, uh, the things that we would uh, like to see happening in summer in, in Muskoka. Hopefully that means things like summer camps that couldn't operate last year and Santa's Village that couldn't operate last year will be able to open. Norm, I want to ask you about um, a lot of what I think these protesters were bringing forward was some pretty harsh criticisms of how the Ford government has dealt with, with this pandemic so far. Um, I know you've been questioned and questioned and questioned over and over again on this. Um, what, I guess if, if you were talking to these people, if you were there and able to talk to them face to face, what would you be saying to them about these criticisms? Well, you didn't say the criticisms exactly, but I think it's probably frustration with uh, being restricted. And I, you know, I would say that uh, we're listening to the health experts, and it's not always perfect. And you know, I've been arguing that Muskoka is different from from Simcoe, and I've been trying to get us separated. That's the biggest thing I think would make a difference for Muskoka and in Perry Sound, frankly, because uh, we had the same scenario over there. But you know, we are in a pandemic, and we're, you know, we're near the end of the pandemic, I believe. 
and we need to listen to the professionals. And, you know, we're at a critical point right now where things can easily go offside, especially with the variants of concern. I mean, over the weekend, we had 11 new cases, I believe, in Huntsville. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a real concern, and that could easily drive us backwards. And believe me, I do not want to go backwards. And I know all the businesses and individuals out there are, are very keen to move forward. So, you know, it's we're in a we're in a tough spot and it's been a long, long year. And but we just need to hang on a little bit longer. And if the vaccine number, vac number of people getting immunized is going to increase exponentially in the next uh, month or so. And that's going to start to make a real difference. I'm